Welcome to part two of Why Does Light Bend When It Enters a New Medium? We're finally going to get the answer together in this video. Now over here I've listed all the assumptions that we came up with in the last video um, which basically set the stage for answering the question Why Does Light Bend When It Enters a New Medium? So over here one of the most important things um, is that light is made up of these little wavelets is what was proposed by Christian Huygens and uh, Fresnel. And the idea is that each of the lines are the crests and the spaces of the trough. So when you light a candle in a room or you have a lamp, there will be a whole bunch of um, spherical waves, if you will, that are made up of all of the crests and troughs of the waves that are oscillating from the object. Those all uh, band together to create the wave front of the given wave. So each little um, tangent line to the wavelet is going to add up to make the wave front and it constructs this plane wave. Now the idea was when it got to an opening it would then um, isolate one of the little wavelets and that little wavelet would just keep propagating as it always had been but there won't be any um, superposition in a way from the other wavelets and so we will see this propagation. Now we know that a ray of light, this light ray over here, that only tells me the direction of the wave. That's what we were working with before. So here we might see that this wave looks as though it's fanning out. Now let's take a look at what happens if this opening was a little bit bigger. So here I have three different scenarios. The first one is basically the one we just talked about. We've isolated just one wavelet here that will give us this very rounded effect of the wave coming through. If we have a wider opening, we're going to have two, maybe two little wavelets come through here. And each one of these, so I'll draw them both here, is going to produce its own wave and essentially what we have is that this tangent portion right over here is going to be a little more flat and then it's going to kind of round out. So the wave front will be a little bit flatter, mimicking this plane wave. Here maybe three come through. Now I'm not going to draw all the individual waves, but essentially what you hopefully are starting to see is that we're going to get a much flatter, wider propagation through this opening. And you can keep extrapolating this scenario outwards where if you had a gap that was very large the whole plane wave would just move through because all those little wavelets are moving through. It's actually a very ingenious perspective and I think that you can um, you can even see that in quantum physics there is support for this idea. So the answer to the question, why the heck does this happen? Why is the light bending? Let's scroll all the way down here where I have a few images from the OpenStaxBC.ca website. I have a link in the description below. They have awesome textbooks that are open source material that give permission to use their images. And what we want to think about is that when you go from one medium into another, you're really encountering new structures of atoms. So the atomic structure, this, this is just you know, one representation here where we have these atoms that are attached to one another that make up a greater lattice or molecular structure of the material. Here they are showing the lattice points and I like this image where they've cut out the lattice uh, cube or box here and we can see the eight corners of it and we can actually see the gaps in between the molecules and hopefully you're starting to think these little openings, which Francesco Grimaldi described as the diffraction of the light, the bending around the obstacles or through the openings, when they encounter these obstacles, the crystalline structure or the space in between the molecular or the atoms or whatever the case may be, depending on what the material is, the light's actually going to diffract through the material which is so neat to think about is that essentially there's tiny little openings depending on the size and the structure of the material and thus different materials excuse me are going to have different responses um, and different interactions with the light so let's see what's happening here 
Well, over here, I'm going to draw a normal line to the surface of this material. Now, this material, I've just drawn, you know, three little molecules, and this would be the boundary over here between the two materials. So we're going into some substance here that I'll call N2, and up here it's N1. So here are my crests and troughs. This is my plane wave. And you can see here, if I wanted to draw a ray onto the front of this, I could actually take um, an arrow. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we'll see that it's hitting at this particular angle that we could describe as the angle of incidence. But more importantly than that now, we're going to think of the little wavelets that make up the front of this wave. Well, these ones over here, whatever wavelet got here first, it's going to start to propagate through that gap before this one does over here. And finally, when this one does, this has already moved pretty far along. By the time the second one starts to propagate through here, and it might be at a slightly different angle, and what we're going to see is now that the new wave front is going to be slightly bent differently. So I could start putting in my, my plane wave lines. And if I draw the arrow here, the ray, relative to the normal line, so let's go ahead and put in our normal line on this side of the material. I'm going to go ahead now and draw in the light ray, which is, we've said is propagated um, kind of in this direction. Oh, we're having a little tech trouble here. Ah, third time's the charm. Let's see, there we go. So you can see that the angle has changed. So essentially what's happened is that the, because this one hit first, and this one hits at a fraction of time later, that the, t the time at which they start propagating through relative to each other, they create that little bit of a slant that's a different slant from what was happening before. So essentially what I'm saying here is refraction occurs or the bending of light occurs because of diffraction the diffraction through the actual substance. And if you think about how the index of refraction affects the speed of the wave, you can think about the fact that the material, maybe its density, which happens to describe the space that it takes up, could affect how much the light bends relative to the other substances. So it's a really neat um, phenomenon that we experience, and it is actually a quantum phenomenon that can be described with probability. And that's what uh, Schrodinger's wave function actually started to set the tone for one style or one interpretation of quantum mechanics. Now, to add to the mystery and the weirdness of what is happening here, what's actually going to happen uh, even further is that when we look at the light that propagates through these gaps, we find that the pattern that it will make on a screen or a projection will be something even stranger than the fact that the light can diffract itself.